It is all steam ahead on the 2024 recruiting class, which is why we're skipping over National Signing Day at Letterman Row as well. And we're going straight to 2024. And that all starts with the cornerstone position of every program, Matt. We're not going to do any pleasantries. We're going to cut straight to the chase. Ohio State is hot on the trail for 2024 quarterbacks after the decommitment of Dylan Rayola. And there are two names that you've been writing about a lot, you've been talking about a lot, that we absolutely have to talk about. Yeah, uh, I'll start off with uh, Jaden Davis out of the Charlotte area, North Carolina. Um, this is a guy where uh, a lot of our Letterman Row followers will know that uh, when he was really in the conversation for Ohio State, uh, different staff here at Letterman Row, but the point remains that, you know, it was essentially between Dylan Rayola and, and Jane Davis. And when, you know, Dylan made his pledge to Ohio state last May, it was okay. We have our guy. We're done. We're good. And then December rolls around decommits. And now you got to, you know, restart the whole entire thing, right? You got to restart the entire recruitment of people that you told no, which is a bit of an uncomfortable conversation. If, you know, like if someone told you no, and then they said, now, wait a second, Spencer, wait, come back. We want you here, right? That'd be a little uncomfortable, which is exactly what Ohio State did uh, a couple weeks ago when the opening of this January contact period started. Uh, Ryan Day and Corey Dennis both headed down to North Carolina to reopen up that recruitment, have some conversations with Jaden himself. And uh, <clears throat> we'll see if, you know, if the Buckeyes can get him on campus, uh, I mean, in what feels like a month from now, I mean, it's January 26th today, but it'll soon enough be March when spring ball happens and more recruiting things happen on campus. Ohio State really doesn't do any of those junior days, um, which are head scratching things for, for you and I, as we've discussed. But as it relates to the Jaden Davis situation, I'm I don't want to say he's number one on the board. I think Ohio State right now, it feels like Ohio State right now is is trying to figure out who is going to be number one. But they also made a pretty strong showing on on who they like when they offered uh, a, another quarterback in the class in uh, the 2024 cycle in Alabama commit Julian Sayan. Now, this is a guy he committed to Alabama, committed in uh, Nick Saban back in November, who – I like this kid. I like him a lot. Um, the, the thing that I like most about him, however, is is right from the jump. You know, you had a bunch of you had a bunch of Ohio State recruiting reporters from different outlets reach out to him. And, and Julian had the same message for all of them. It was nice to be offered by such an elite program by Ohio State. But I committed to Alabama. I committed to Nick Saban. And this is where I'm going to go now, as we all know. Ohio State's former quarterback commit, Dylan Rayola, said those exact same things. And now look at him. Now look at the situation, right? So I think the, the, the biggest thing to watch is, is what Ohio State is doing in the shadows, right? Who are they looking at in the shadows? You know, what is the communication like for these two prospects? And, I mean, Spencer, uh, not, to, not to kind of throw – you know, throw it back on you here. But but when you look at these two guys, you know, if, if, if you've had the chance to really watch any of them, you know, what are some commonalities between these two quarterbacks other than the fact that, you know, all four major recruiting services like them? They're both very athletic. They both uh, have the uh, quick release. They're not the biggest guys. I think that's a big thing. Uh, you know, you talk about Dylan Rayoli, six foot three, he's 220 pounds already. He looks pro ready. Uh, he's not pro ready. Obviously, he's 17. Uh, but he looks the part as far as a starting stature quarterback in the Big Ten in in major division of college football. I think there's still a lot of growth and development for both of these guys. Matt, I think it's 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 important to to also talk about the idea of what happened with Jaden Davis before we get into Julian saying, right? Like J Jaden Davis told Ohio State, I'm visiting for the spring game. Letterman Monroe reported Jaden Davis would visit for the spring game. The day before the spring game, he was going to drive from uh, over at, I think it was Penn State, I believe, to Columbus for the spring game. Ohio State said, no, Dylan Rayola is coming for the spring game. And Jaden Davis was like, well, I can't go there then for the spring game. And so Ohio State almost chose Dylan Rayola as a spring game visitor over Jaden Davis. Not almost either. They did. Jaden yeah. Davis was not at the spring game. Dylan Rayola was. That is what makes this so interesting. 
And so now that Dylan Rail is, is going to be committed elsewhere because he's not going to Ohio State, you are talking about reopening that process with Jaden Davis after telling him, hey, don't come visit for the spring game because this guy is, is almost in a sense this guy is better. So yeah. I just think that's a crazy way of starting this conversation. But now we can get into the Davis versus Saiyan thing just because, you know, Ohio State's after the Alabama quarterback commit, that's a big deal. Well, well, now uh, I want to stay on this Davis note really quick because now you've jogged my memory about something else. You know, Ohio State, Ohio State told him no. Uh, like you said, they told him no. Uh, we have Dylan come into town. Blah 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 blah. And uh, who swooped in onto that recruitment? Michigan, right? So now it's a very similar situation to maybe not as similar, but it, it it's. It's like J.J. McCarthy's recruitment, right? Ohio State liked him. He liked Ohio State a lot, Has especially this past fall, went on the record and saying, you know, they just like someone else better, blah, blah, blah. You know, that whole entire sentiment. And uh, J.J. McCarthy had a pretty good day against Ohio State. Now we're not going to get into that entire experience and rehash it out once again for, for the Ohio State fans listening to this because there's no need for that. We're talking about 2024 quarterbacks. However... The recruitment of of JJ McCarthy um, kind of bears similar, I guess, to to Jaden Davis, where Ohio State, the quarterback factory, told him no, and Michigan said, "Hey, you know what? We'll take you. We like you a lot. We'll take you." Michigan is by far leaps and bounds the leader right now um, in Jaden Davis's recruitment. They've done a really good job of courting him and his family. That's the biggest thing for a lot of these a lot of these kids. You don't recruit me. You recruit my entire family as well. Made multiple trips down to North Carolina to, to visit with him and his family. And, and now the biggest thing is, can Ohio State re-enter the picture after saying, no, we like someone better, and now that person's gone? That's going to be the biggest thing. Yeah, absolutely. And then you – look at Julian Sayan, who is very steadfast in his pledge to Alabama. Like you said, uh, Dylan Riola was that way with Ohio State. Something broke down there. Uh, multiple things broke down there. But, you know, can you start to pry away at that relationship, show Julian Sayan why he's a fit at Ohio State? And then let's not kid ourselves here. There are going to be other names, the 2024 quarterback. There, there are plenty of other names uh, that could pop up, that could surface, that could resurface, you know. Once a quarterback commits, it's not like a, a wide receiver, a defensive back, or an offensive tackle. Once a quarterback commits, you've got your guy. And unless you're dead set on taking two, the Jack Miller and C.J. Stroud situation, then you're going to, uh, you know, this is not one of those situations where you're still talking to a lot of guys. You're still keeping that line of communication open. You know, so Julian Sayan has slid into this conversation just because Ohio State offered. That doesn't mean that Ohio State's going to, to really enter the mix here. But it is an interesting dynamic now with these two quarterbacks where it's almost a three quarterback thing where you can't you can't talk about any of this without talking about Dylan Rayola. He's the number one overall player in the country, probably regardless of class. And he was at one time committed to Ohio State. And he's the not the reason because Ohio State certainly, you know, it's, it's, Rayola is not the only culprit there as far as what happened in those talks uh, as far as him decommitting. But you know, now you're you're talking about you lose the number one overall player at the quarterback position, and now you've got to reevaluate everything that has to do with this quarterback class. Uh, who's going to be the guy? Is it Julian Sam? Is it Jaden Davis? Is it another guy? Do you put all your chips into one basket, or do you go like the 23 class and spread your wings a little, maybe let yourself fly a little, and, and find a guy from around the country that you feel really comfortable in? But at the same time, Matt, this is not a situation where Ohio State can take and this is not a knock whatsoever on Lincoln Keenholz at all. This isn't really a situation where Ohio State can take a Lincoln Keenholz style development, uh, developmental path style player. This is, you took CJ Stroud in 2020. In 2021, you took another five-star on Kyle McCord. In 2022, you took Devin Brown. Well, if Kyle McCord starts a year and Devin Brown starts a year, the 2024 quarterback has a chance to come in and compete for the starting quarterback job at Ohio State against Lincoln Keenholz. This has to be a home run of a quarterback commit. And you thought you had it in Dylan Rayola. Now you've got to reevaluate. I think it still starts with Jaden Davis. But you hear the tone in my voice, Matt. It's not going to be an easy one to weasel back into because of what transpired between him and Dylan Rayola. And Ohio State's in a weird spot right now. 
I, not not only are they in a weird spot, but they're they are in an uncomfortable spot, right? You mentioned C.J. Stroud, Devin Brown, and Kyle McCord, and you know what? It seemed like you know how we joke and we say uh, with defensive line recruiting, you know, Larry's guys, Larry gets who Larry wants. Well, that's kind of what has happened with Ryan Day and Corey Dennis, right? Like they get who they want, okay? They, and they they tell people no, you know, and and now it's it's like they're at this this uncomfortable intersection of well you know there are other things going against us right now in in the recruiting world that you know apparently the resume of going to new york city in december and being a first round draft pick is not appetizing enough for for high school prospects or for whatever the elephant in the room is that would disrupt that i do not know could couldn't pin that one down if you wanted to but that's blatant sarcasm for the folks at home. But uh, <laughs> my, my point here is absolutely agree with what you're saying about how 24, it, you, you have to get someone good. Like you have to get one of those high rated top of the top, you know, goes to the elite 11 and balls out and takes home the trophies and stuff like that. And again, that is not a knock on Lincoln Keenholz. You know, after watching him spin it for a week, He's good too. Like he's yeah. he's going to Ohio State on scholarship for a reason. That's not a knock by any means. I think what we're trying to say is it has to be someone that looks the part of absolutely could step onto a college campus once they sign their letter of intent and make some noise in a quarterback room. And that's what they need in 2024. Is it Jaden Davis? Who's to say? Is it Julian saying? I don't know. We'll find out, right? Is it someone else that we don't know that could be a fast riser and go, holy cow, what a, where has this guy been this whole entire time? You know, some people don't camp. Some people don't go to these seven on sevens and other things like that. So, well, and, know. you know, Buckle up. can you chip away at the relationship between the LSU and Colin Hurley? This, that's a kid who class, reclassified from the 25 class, Ohio State, excuse me, loved what they saw from him in the 25 class. Uh, he threw on the same day as Dylan Rayola last June. That's a special player. So can Ohio State maybe chip away at that relationship with LSU? If you're going to try to poke the bear and chip away at a relationship between Nick Saban and a recruit, you might as well do it with Brian Kelly. I mean, so there are options around the country. The 2024 class isn't completely bare of quarterbacks. So the quarterback class, that's a little bit of a primer, I guess, for the next uh, 11 months 